friends, and welcome to Restaurant Recipe Recreations, a channel dedicated to teaching you how to create your favorite signature dishes from the most popular restaurants. And lately, I've been getting a lot of requests from my viewers to feature more desserts from popular restaurants. And in looking through my channel, I recognize that, yes, most of my episodes have not focused heavily on popular restaurant desserts. And really, the only reason for that, frankly, I think is just because I'm not much of a dessert person myself. I kind of tend towards the savory flavors. But then it made me realize that this channel is not about me, it's about what you, the viewer, want. Although my husband would argue that everything is pretty much always about me. <laughs> I'll leave that alone for another conversation. And so I'm gonna teach you a great dessert today. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to recreate the classic strawberry cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory. I mean, right? Duh. And the strawberry cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory is just simply their classic cheesecake with a graham cracker and vanilla crumb crust topped with fresh whipped cream and glazed beautiful whole strawberries. And the simplicity of it and the freshness and the brightness of flavors, I think is why it's become their most popular and highest selling cheesecake of all time. And I'm going to teach you how to recreate it in your own home today. But before we do, I would like to ask that if you're enjoying this channel, if you find this channel fun, informative, but most importantly, if I'm bringing you value by teaching you how to recreate your favorite signature recipes from the most popular restaurants, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. And if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up as well. All right, to make this cheesecake, you're going to need 10 large graham crackers, 30 Nilla wafers, a pound and a half of fresh strawberries, 40 ounces of very, very softened uh, Philadelphia cream cheese or whatever cream cheese you happen to use, stick and a half of butter that we're going to need to melt, five eggs, a half of a cup of sour cream, you're going to need uh, sugar, you're also going to need vanilla extract and cornstarch. And you're also going to need a springform pan, which is the preferred way to make a cheesecake. And all a springform pan is, obviously, is a pie pan or a cake pan that has a spring on it. When you release the spring, you're able to take the sides away from the base of the pan. And this is really gonna be pretty integral. So you'll need to get one of these. If you don't have one, you can pick it up on Amazon easily. It'll be delivered the next day. Or you could probably even buy one of these at your local grocery store. And the size of this is just a standard 10 inch pan. So the first thing that we actually have to do is we need to cover this in aluminum foil. The reason for that is because this is going to go into a water bath once we put it into the oven. A water bath is kind of a way to almost sort of steam the cheesecake while it's in the oven. And the reason that you need to make sure that this is well covered in foil is so that none of the water accidentally seeps through these cracks and creases and then gets into your cheesecake and makes it watery. Make sure you use plenty of foil and just ensure that the sides are really, really crimped and tightly packed against the pan. You don't want any of that water to leak in. Once you're sure that your springform pan is watertight, go ahead and set that off to the side. And next we're gonna focus on the crust. I have a stick and a half of unsalted butter. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the microwave because I need this butter to be melted. So get out your food processor. Um, I don't know if you can see this food processor, but it is so old school that it actually has an avocado green knob on it. <laughs> I think probably like my grandmother gave it to me. Um, but it's a brawn and it's a total workhorse and I love this thing. All right, so in a dry food processor basin, take your 10 graham crackers. Go ahead and crack them in there. All right, now that I have a little bit more room, I'm going to add 30 Nilla wafers. And yes, I did. I literally counted out 30. I'm diagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder, so obviously I counted out 30. <laughs> and then to the Nilla wafers and graham crackers, you wanna add two tablespoons of white sugar. And now pulse this until you have an even crumb throughout all of the Nilla wafers and graham crackers. <laughs> Just kind of sift around it a little bit, make sure that everything is broken down into the same size crumb. Now add your crumb into a large mixing bowl 
And now you're going to add your stick and a half of melted unsalted butter. Evenly stir and mix this all around until all of the ingredients are well incorporated and all of the crumb is wet with the melted butter. Even though your springform pan should be nonstick, uh, most of them are, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray the heck out of it with cooking spray because I wanna make sure that when I release the pan and take the cheesecake out of it, that none of it sticks to it. So go ahead and spray the you know what out of the inside of your springform pan. Now take the crumb crust, put it into your springform pan. And once you have an even layer of the crumb crust at the bottom, get yourself some kind of a weight or a glass or something. Using the bottom of the glass, you want to gently press down on the crust and then you're going to sort of push the crust up halfway up the walls of the springform pan. Now that your crust has been firmly pressed to the bottom of the pan and to the sides, stick your crust in the freezer while we make the filling. In your stand mixer bowl, or if you're going to be using a hand mixer in a very, very large mixing bowl, add 40 ounces of very softened Philadelphia cream cheese. Now you can see how soft this is. I had this sitting out for hours um, because it just makes for a nicer cheesecake and I'll explain why in a bit. And now add a half of a cup of sour cream. Attach your whisk attachment. Starting on a low speed, mix the cream cheese and sour cream together. Once the cream cheese and the sour cream uh, are well blended, add one and a half cups of white sugar two tablespoons of cornstarch, and four teaspoons of vanilla extract. And go ahead and beat that again. While that's mixing, crack five eggs into a bowl. Slowly add in your five beaten eggs. Okay, now that your cheesecake filling is ready, preheat your oven to 425 on bake or convection bake. Get your crust out from the freezer and start a kettle of water so that I can show you how to do the water bath in the oven. So take your filling and very gently and evenly go ahead and pour it into your crust. Take your rubber spatula and smooth out the surface of the cheesecake. And once you've done that, I'm going to show you a little trick. You want to take the entire cheesecake and pound it down onto the counter. Now what this does is it removes any air pockets or bubbles in the cheesecake filling so that once it's baked you have this great smooth consistency throughout your cheesecake. Once your oven comes up to 425 degrees, carefully place your cheesecake in either a roasting pan or a cast iron skillet in the center of the oven. Take your boiling water, pour it into the cast iron skillet. You want the water to come up about a third of the way and uncovered bake your cheesecake at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. Once your timer goes off after 15 minutes at 425 degrees, Reset your oven. Do not open the oven door. Keep the oven door shut, but reset your oven to 350 degrees. Convection bake or bake. So cheerful, right? <laughs> Everything sings to me in my house. And now set your timer for 55 minutes. And leave it alone. Now that we have the cheesecake in the oven, let's go ahead and make the glaze for the glazed strawberries. I have back out my OG food processor. I'm going to add into the food processor a half of a quart of fresh strawberries. Pulse these up to make a puree. To the pureed strawberries, add one and a half teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, one half of a cup of granulated white sugar, and a half a cup of water. And now put this on medium until well blended. Now transfer this mixture to a saucepan and reduce on a medium heat until the glaze becomes syrupy. Once your strawberry glaze has reduced to the point where it has a thick jello-like consistency, 
remove it from the pan and put it in the refrigerator to completely cool. Once it's cooled, you're ready to glaze your strawberries. Then quite simply, all you want to do is transfer your strawberries into a mixing bowl, add the chilled glaze, and then just gently coat each one of the strawberries with the glaze. After your timer goes off at 55 minutes, check your cheesecake. The center of your cheesecake should be slightly wobbly to about the size of a tennis ball. If it is, you know that you're ready to turn off your oven. Turn your oven off completely and crack the oven door using a dish rag. Leave the cheesecake to cool in the oven until you can comfortably remove the cheesecake with your bare hands. So before you decorate this cake, whether it's with strawberries or the whipped cream or anything really, this cheesecake needs to stay in the refrigerator for a minimum of four hours so that it is completely set and cold all the way through. And now we're going to carefully remove it from the springform pan. I'm going to just sort of run a knife along the side here. Even though I did spray it down with a pan spray, I just want a little extra assurance. Undo the spring form and then just carefully lift it over the top. Look at how beautiful. Run your knife along the bottom of the cake to loosen the crust from the pan. A crown of fresh whipped cream all along the edge. And now we're going to place our fresh glazed strawberries right in the center. This may just have the ability to turn me into a dessert eater. <laughs> all right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoy all of my videos. If you have a restaurant or a recipe that you would like me to feature, go ahead and drop it in the comment section below and I'll be happy to take a look at it. But until I see you all again, everybody, make it an awesome, awesome day. Cheers, I love y'all. That was a really good strawberry. <laughs> That strawberry was bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs>